In this video, we will take a look at what are binary templates and uh, why they are useful. To do this, let's take an example of a zip file, which is strings.zip. Now to view the contents of the file, you can simply double click the file. And we see that the zip file contains three files inside of it. So there are two exes and there's one text file, right? Now let's take a step back. Let's say you don't want to open up the file, but you want to understand the structure of this file. So one of the things that you commonly do when you want to understand the structure of a file is to open it up in a hex editor. So I use a hex editor called 010 editor. I'm going to open up the zip file in this. So the hex editor basically shows you two interpretations of the contents of the file. So on the left pane, it shows you the hex and in the right pane, it shows you the ASCII interpretation of the contents. Just by looking at these contents, you can make some inferences, like maybe a zip file begins with a string pk. And here you can see one of the files contained in the zip file, which is strings.exe. And the rest is all gibberish. Now by looking at this data, it is not very helpful for us to understand the structure of a zip file. Maybe we can go and study the zip specification and try to understand it. But a better way to do it is use something called as binary templates. So now let's see how to apply a template to this zip file. So I click on templates and you can see there are templates for different file formats. So you go to archive and I select zip. Then I select templates and click on run template. At the bottom of the screen, you can see the results of running this template, zip.bt. So running the template has basically broken down the file into different data structures. You can just point and click and see those data structures within the strings.zip file. And you can also collapse a data structure and see what are the elements. Having run this template, you can see that a zip file is basically composed of three types of records. The zip file record, the zip directory entry and the zip end locator. As you can see, without reading through the zip file documentation, we have kind of gained an understanding of the structure of a zip file. We can actually continue to explore this further. You can maybe see if you remove the zip end locator, will the zip file still work? So I deleted the end locator and I'm saving the file. So go back to Explorer and try to open the file. So it looks like it fails to open. Let me try with 7-zip now. Interesting. So 7-zip is able to open the file even though there is no end locator. But the Windows shell zip interpreter expects the file to have an end locator. Let me run the template again by pressing F5. You can see that the end locator has disappeared now. Now let's look at the other data structures. I'll start with the zip directory entry. So if you look at the directory entry, they just seem to be small entries, maybe about 50 to 60 bytes in size. And uh, if I zoom into a directory entry, I can see that it has some of the metadata about the compressed file, like the type of compression algorithm, the timestamps and compressed and uncompressed size, the CRC checksum and so on. So what I'm going to try now is uh, I'll probably see if I can delete all the directory entries and see if the zip file still opens. So I've deleted all the directory entries. I will save the file and run the template again by pressing F5. Now you can see my zip file has only the zip file record, which is basically a collection of metadata about the file and the compressed data. Let's see if you are able to open the file now. So you go back to Explorer and try to open it with 7-zip. And again to my surprise, 7-zip is able to open the file even though the file doesn't have an end locator and it doesn't have any of the directory entry structures. right? And I'm also able to open the file without any issues. So anyways, uh, that's a summary of what templates are. So when you think of templates, think that somebody has already done the hard work of interpreting the file format for you and created a template. And the hex editor allows you to basically match the template with an input file and parse the data structures in the file. Templates are kind of a markup. So here you can view the templates. I go to templates and view install templates. I click on zip and then I click on edit. 
So now I'm inside the template file, which is basically a markup. Looks like it's well commented. They also given a link from which they have taken the zip format. Without going too much into the markup, you can see that it's very similar to a C program. So you have enumerations and structures which are used to define the template for us. So here we have seen how you can open up a file, map it to a template, view the data structures inside the file and just play around with it. Now this is a very simple use case that I have shown. Templates are a great help for many things. For example, if you want to build a tool which processes zip files, you can use templates to do that. Or if you want to explore the data structures, you can just zoom into that and see if there are any fields which can be used to build a steganography tool, or you can use it for file format fuzzing. So the use cases are only limited by your creativity. With that, we come to the end of this video. In the next video, I'll probably show you how to create a simple template in 010 Editor. Thanks for watching.